If you take a look at this uh, gear arrangement here, hopefully you're going to recognise this. This is called a worm, and then this part is called a worm wheel, sometimes called a spur gear. However, it should be cut slightly different from a spur gear, but I'm not so sure whether it is in Lego. Anyway, um, we can turn this part so we could regard this as the input, and then this as the output. And you'll notice that the input is going to be running at 90 degrees to the output. The other thing that you'll notice is that this, the input, is turning much faster than the output. And the relationship is that this is going to turn, in this case, 28 times for every one rotation of this. Now, the way I worked that out was I counted the number of teeth, which is 28. And I happen to know that with a worm, we only have one tooth. Now that sort of probably doesn't make a lot of sense why you think this only has one tooth, but I've um, marked the um, I've marked the spindle here, so I've marked that red uh, with a pen there, and I've also marked this one as well. So hopefully you can see that there. Now let's see what happens when I rotate this by just one rotation. Did you notice that this tooth only, or this um, this gear, uh, only advanced by one tooth? Let's do it again. And once again, it's only advanced by one tooth. Another place you might want to look at, if you look at the grid here, and you see that it's in alignment. Let's rotate now by just one. And hopefully again, you saw that it's effectively advanced by one tooth. Not that this really has teeth. So when we're working out velocity ratio we normally do the number of uh, teeth on the driven gear over the number of teeth on the driver gear. But in this particular case the uh, driven gear has 28 teeth and because it's a worm we just count it as just one tooth. So it's 28 over 1 meaning that we would have to rotate, rotate this one 28 times for one full rotation of the worm wheel. Other things you might want to uh, consider is that um, the motor, typically a motor, is going to be connected to this. That could be a crank handle, of course. But it, let's say we've got a motor connected to this, driving this, and maybe this is, um, I don't know, um, say heavy lifting equipment or a garage door opener or something like that. Imagine what happens when you turn the power off to the motor. Um, then the load is going to be uh, placed on this wheel, but how much load you place, you cannot turn the motor by applying load here. Yes, you can easily turn this, but it doesn't go in the opposite direction. So that's a really uh, cool feature of having the uh, worm and the worm wheel. Okay, um, hopefully that's, uh, that's useful.